In video APQ04, we saw how we can combine two tables that are inconsistent in number of columns. As you can see in this example, we have four columns table and six columns table. We managed to combine both together without errors. And we add a new table that contains a new column. It will be appended automatically without errors and without any additional steps. In order to do so, we used some M code functions and we build a query with seven applied steps. And when we extract the code, you will see that it's relatively long and complicated. However, one of my friends called Rodsto Poprowski, he sent me saying, Amr, why you are overcomplicating? And he sent me a solution of two lines code and only two applied steps. Let's go together and try the solution came from our friend. Hello and welcome to a new video from Advanced Power Query series, video number six or APQ06. In this video, I will discuss only one M code function, which is basically table.combine. We are going to use the same example that we used in APQ04 because we are going to land on the same result exactly. However, in a much shorter and efficient way, thank you to our friend that sent me this solution. I'm going to put a link on top of the screen now if you want to go and rewatch APQ04 in order to understand the example and see the difference between the solution that we presented and the solution that we are going to present today. Let's go back to Excel and see how we are going to apply this new solution. A workbook contains two worksheets. The first worksheet containing a table like this. It is four column table, product category, date and count. In sheet number two, you will find a similar table, but with six columns. We have two additional columns, one for the status and one for the region. We want to combine both tables together. Not only this, in another workbook, we have three sheets, sheet three, four and five. If you check sheet number four, you will see that we have a similar table, but with a new column that never appeared before, which is basically quantity. Again, if you check sheet number five, you have additional column never appeared before, which is basically the value. When we add these sheets to the previous workbook or to the original workbook, all will be combined together without any errors. Let's start our solution straight away. I'm going to start from a blank workbook. I'm going directly to data ribbon on the left hand side, get data from file from Excel workbook. Here is my file and then import and this will trigger the navigator from the navigator i can select sheet one to preview or sheet two also but i need both sheets or the entire workbook so i'm going to select the header of the workbook itself and then transform data and this will trigger the power query editor on the right hand side the name of the query coming from the name of the excel workbook i can just do a small edit deleting the xlsx and then hit enter in the middle, you'll see the information inside this workbook. It is only two sheets. You have here all the data regarding these two sheets. And also you can preview the data from the data column. If you check any of these cells, I can just put my mouse here on the empty space, on the empty white space to the right hand side of the word table. I can just preview the data as you can see down here. The first thing that you can notice is the headers is not promoted. You will see the headers name like uh, column one, two, three, and four. And you have here the original names of the columns as you put them inside your sheets. I need to promote the first line to be the headers of this table. In order to do so, I can either add a new step or I can just edit inside the source step. In order to edit, let me just expand the formula bar. And if you check the parameters of excel.workbook, you will find that here is the name of the table. And afterwards, you have two parameters. The second one that is by default is null. I can just change this into true. And this is, is telling Excel or telling Power Query, please use first row as a header. Once I change to true, I can just use the tick mark on the left hand side. Let me check again. And here you go. 
the headers are promoted so now i don't need all these columns i need just only the data column because this is exactly what i'm going to combine in order to just leave the data column i can just select it and right click and remove other column however i can just edit inside the source step again instead of adding a new step in order to do so i'm going to edit again and i'm going to add a square bracket and inside these two square brackets i'm going to write the name of the column which is basically data and then again the check mark and here you go you have list of two tables and each and every table containing the data that you want to combine so what i did here i just selected the column data and instead of removing the other column by adding a new step now i'm ready i can just combine the source step in a new step in order to do so i'm going to select the f of x in order to add a custom step and you can see it's defaulted to a new name which is custom one i can just go and edit source containing the list of the tables that i want to combine and this is exactly the only parameter required by our function which is basically table.combine so i'm going right after the equal sign and start to write table.combine and then open a bracket and close the bracket right after the word source and then hit enter and here you go all done at once both tables are combined together and the headers are going perfectly no problem at all the very last step is to detect the data types i'm going to select the first column and then press and hold shift and select the last column going to transform and then detect data types and i'm good to go home close and load close and load two i'm going to load it into a table existing worksheet a1 is okay and then click on okay and here you go 26 rows loaded and your data the two tables are combined perfectly let's go now and try to add more tables with different columns inside the same workbook and see what will happen inside more tables workbook i have the three additional sheets i'm going to select sheet three and then press and hold shift and then select sheet five right click move or copy i want to move this into different column tables this is the original workbook i'm going to move this to the end and i'm going to check create a copy and then click on ok here you go you have the five sheets inside the same workbook let me save and close this one i'm going to save and close this one as well and let me go back to our table the loaded table from the query right click and refresh and let's see what will happen now it's 71 rows loaded you have the extra two columns added if you check the data down here you will see that the new data combined no errors the new columns added and everything is going perfectly that was all for today if you like this video please like it subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment you will find here some useful links please check them out and see you in next video and bye